Hi guys, I want to do something a little bit different today. I've been working on a translation that's been done uh, using Machine Assist to help me with some Japanese text. This is taken from the great website uh, omurastudy.net, uh, which is a tremendous resource for Japanese swords, especially late period uh, Japanese blades. Um, and it details accounts from World War II of actual combat uh, accounts of uh, Gunto. Uh, that were used during the 1930s. Um, I've translated a block of text and we'll go over it in a second. Just a, a reminder, since we're talking about actual historical accounts that were taking place during battle and during World War II, we're going to do this um, candidly and just reviewing it from a historical perspective. We're not taking any sides and uh, we'll, while I'm pretty confident that these are, are were done during battle rather than in any type of a massacre or, or war crimes, I'm not a historian, so I'll leave those uh, those sort of debates for the actual military historians. We're just looking at it from a standpoint of the descriptions of the sword and how the sword performed, but we'll do it um, with uh, nuance and appreciation that it can be a sensitive topic for, for some people. These are excerpts that are from a, a book um, published in March of 1933 from Captain Haiso Koizumi. And it's relating to a Shanghai incident that occurred from the previous year in March of 1932. So this is detailing accounts of a naval force that landed and was severely outnumbered. The, uh, the book details that they were outnumbered something like 18 to 1 um, and fighting in an urban environment, which the Navy wasn't really equipped for. Um, as a result, even the officers ended up fighting in very close combat, um, fighting hand to hand and with with pistols, um, so, which is how th these accounts uh, come up. So this um, this captain who was interested in was interested in swords specifically went back after the fact and conducted interviews of fourteen use cases of gunto and how they performed afterwards. Now, this is a time when we have a mixture of different types of swords. The um, Kyugunto had been in use since the, the late 1880s and was still in use and was starting to be replaced by um, the, the newer um, uh, Shin Gunto um, type Koshirai. So you have two different kind of competing models and occasionally there may have been more old type, type of traditional sort of katana mounts. Um, as well, but uh, you have different configurations of sword, and they'll get into the discussion of that a little bit. The site owner has a couple comments on the captain. Um, Colonel Kuzumi was an enthusiastic believer in Japanese swords and a proponent of the effectiveness of military swords, and the author's intention is reflected in his notes. Um, the principle of exaggerating stories and downplaying um, failures applies to any of these accounts. So there's going to be a biases in the, the tabulation here. The description that several of the officers who were confident in their swordsmanship with the equivalent of skills of three and four dan holders in kendo indicates that there were several officers with some skill in swordsmanship um, even before, before they got into this. Let's review the actual cases and then we'll read about what he says in summary as uh, findings about how these gunto performed in, in combat. Um, so we have tw about 24 different swords, and they'll describe the signature, the length of the sword, the sori, or curvature, the number of attacks that were made with it, which locations, then qualities related to the attack, what damage it occurred, and the observations. And I'll have a link to my tabulation of this. And again, I'm not, I don't speak Japanese. Um, this was all done with machine-assisted machine translation, so an actual Japanese scholar, please feel free to correct me on any of my translation mis mistakes. So the first sword has a length. Um, I've translated all of these um, nagasa, so when we talk about length, this is just the cutting portion of the blade. So the first sword has a length of 69.7 centimeters, a sori of 0 0.7 centimeters, two cuts, one at the shoulder. Um, an instant cut right through the uh, K 
Goki and it struck down the enemy with a single hand. Um, it's difficult to achieve a clean kill. It's still possible to strike down the an enemy. Second strike was done at the neck. And although he was struck a fatal blow, he did not die instantly and was not beheaded completely. Um, damages observed to the blade. The curved edge was only slightly... A curved edge occurred only slightly on the monouchi, so at, towards the cutting edge of the blade. Um, near the base of the monouchi, a, a shallow notch extends about one sun, which is about three centimeters in length. A deep notch was seen in the upper part offset from the center, and a flaw on the blade about one sun, again about three centimeter from the central ridge, caused by cutting into the enemy's gun or bayonet. Um, and among other notes, the handle of the standard military sword, so this is a Kyugonto, um, is generally longer than usual so that it can be gripped with both hands. So this is a two-handed version of a Kyugonto. Um, the deep bl blade notches indicate they are not designed to cut the enemy's equipment or metallic parts of the firearms. Even if the opponent is killed instantly by a blow to the neck, it is not necessarily a clean decapitation. So this guy has a two-handed Kyugonto, he says that the quality of this particular blade indicates that if you strike someone's bayonet or someone's gun, it's going to damage your blade. I don't know if that's an indictment of the um, geometry of his sword or the heat treatment. Maybe he, he doesn't know either. Maybe he's just saying you're not intended to go banging your sword on the enemy's weapons. And he warns that you can still kill someone with a blow to their neck even if you don't necessarily decapitate them okay the next sword had is slightly longer uh, a, a nagasa of 71.5 centimeters a deeper sorry at 1.8 centimeters of curvature two strikes also both done to the neck um quality of the cut it translates as no excellence to speak of it was a poor cut no damage conducted to the blade and observations. He described that it was like a dream, and he couldn't remember it clearly, but it cut well without any trouble. I felt that the handle of the standard military sword was a little too short, so perhaps this was a standard Kyugonto, which again is more like a one-handed um, grip, and it's kind of difficult to squeeze two of your hands in there. The next sword is again 69.7 centimeters, um, 0 0.7, so, sorry, Apparently, eight strikes were done with this sword. Um, one to the head, um, and it's described as causing instant death by a draw cut, so by a, an EI from the scabbard. Um, three to the head, or skull. One caused decapitation. Two, that the blade swung down and the head was, it, I translate it as lowered, maybe the opponent fell. Um, two were executed on the shoulder area, killed by, it just as killed by a two-handed sword, as a note, and two and an unknown location. As two damage occurred, a large notch was found on the lower side of the yukote, the lines um, at the end, um, that extended about nine centimeters below the spot where the blade struck the object. Additionally, several notches were found along the blade, so some damage occurred again towards the end of the, the, the sword. This is the area where we're going to be conducting most of the striking with. And it makes sense. You're usually conducting the strike with that last third of the blade. And if anything, you're going to receive blows with the lower portion of the blade. Um, comments. A blade with notches cannot sever a head. Even after cutting down an enemy during battle with it still in its uh, Japanese style, uh, Koshirai, the sword blade remains straight without any bends. A sword with a length of about one shaku and eight sun is suitable for you. So this guy is describing a much shorter sword, a 54 centimeter sword instead of the 70 centimeter sword he has. So this guy is really recommending a wakizashi. And he says a wakizashi is sufficient. Now, it doesn't have any other notes indicating that he was using a wakizashi at any point, but he feels, he comments that that is a suitable enough sword, and uh, perhaps he had his in a uh, Japanese-style uh, koshirai. The next sword, a little bit shorter, 63.6 Nagasa, a uh, much deeper sori at 
2.1 centimeters of sorry, two strikes. The first is left quesa, so that's a diagonal cut from the left, um, and a strike that reaches down to the right breast, so cutting down into about halfway through their, their chest. Um, and then the second strike is from the left diagonally to the right top of their head, so like that. Um, descriptions, the feeling of the sword on the, on the quesa is different from the feeling on the head. There is no resistance. So uh, my translation may not be perfect, but one, on one of the strikes, apparently, there was very little uh, resistance there. Um, as to damage, at this time, a small nick appeared at the edge, slightly above the center. I used uh, Nihonto Koshirai, so traditional Koshirai, and later found that it was slightly bent near the Tabaki. Uh, when I checked the center. So he was looking down the the uh, middle, and apparently the sword bent very close to where it connects to the hilt. Um, so he, even though there was only two strikes, one of which was against the, the head, which is a very dense target, um, at some point along the way, there was a bend in the blade. Presumably, um, if he's checking the center line, presumably it flexed and caused a little bit of a bend uh, where, where you can get a, a lot of torque um, on the hilt. Uh, the next sword, 73 centimeters, 1.5 uh, sorry, and um, three strikes done. Two strikes conducted doing right quesa, so right diagonal strike from above. Um, the only comment is that the performance was excellent. One strike at the neck, which says perf perfectly beheaded with a single stroke of the sword. Um, during Kasagiri, the blade may slightly chip, but the sharpness remains unchanged and it is still in excellent condition. So um, again, hopefully all of my vocabulary is, is correct, but apparently some minor damage can occur when he's saying during Kasagiri. So that's just a big downwards strike, and who knows what is being hit at that point. It could be going through you know, warded off arms or clothing or all sorts of things, bones, um, what have you. Um, using a Japanese sword in its uh, koshirai during um, a uh, tos, tosgets, uh, tosgeki, a, a charge, the hand may slip slightly, resulting in the blade bending slightly during the second kesgiri. So he's saying if you're running and striking, and you you have typical koshirai, then you risk the blade slipping slightly. Interesting. Okay, the next one is a short blade, 54.5 centimeter nagasa. So this is a wakasashi style blade, uh, size blade instead of a full size daito. Um, 2.3 centimeter sori, so very curved for its short length. Um, one strike, the strike was conducted at the neck, um, with one hand, you can cut off three-fourths of the neck. The blade is extremely sharp. Um, no, nothing abnormal conducted, uh, reported from the strike. And it says use is uh, with uh, Japanese-style koshirai. So a Japanese-style uh, wakizashi that was able to mostly cut through the neck with a single strike, as reported. The next one is a reasonably short blade, but a little, um, but longer than than a um, than a wakasashi. Uh, Sixty-six centimeters, one point five. Sorry, one strike conducted at the neck. It reports the sharpness is extremely good and it cuts with ease. It can easily sever a head um, with it flying off about four shaku or four four feet. Um, and it reports nothing abnormal. Um, it's, it reports that this is in standard military sword mountings. The next one, a longer blade, 74.6 uh, centimeter Nagasa, doesn't report any sori, uh, two strikes, both at the neck. It says the cutting ability is suitable. Um, no, nothing abnormal as far as damage is concerned, and it was in uh, Japanese style koshirai or traditional koshirai. The next one is 63.6 centimeters, 
no um, no sorry reported seven different strikes with that um, the first one is a left shoulder cross across the chest and a cut up to the area of the right breast the next one is an arm strike which it says it completely severed the arm the next one is the upper leg diagonally severed across the leg three strikes to the neck and it says it cut excellently through the neck and the last one it says koshigaruma which is a one of the strikes from judo but it's presumably a, a hip strike um and it says one third of the way through the target so presumably a strike somewhere along the hip and it was still able to go approximately a third of the way through the hip um it describes no abnormal abnormalities or regularities of any kind now again as as they uh, mentioned the first time we're to take all of this with a little bit of a grain of salt but that's still a tremendous amount of action seen for uh, presumably a single blade and they don't report any um, need to to go in for repairs um, there's a separate account on on uh, omorastudy.net where it talks about uh, bringing in a um, a sword repair unit that stayed with um, the, the the main the the military unit for a time, and it reported a, about five percent of the swords that were um, in theater needing some some type of repair, um, and of those, only about thirty percent were related to combat, and the rest of them were just due to getting damaged because of um traveling or because they were practicing with them or, or what have you and thanks to the magic of editing we have zero continuity errors continuing so this blade is 69.7 nagasa it's only 0 0.3 on the sori and there was one strike done at the neck it says the neck was almost completely severed with only about 1.5 millimeters of thickness remaining so basically the entire thing severed all the way through it describes a chip on the blade measuring about one shaku so a shaku is about an entire foot 30 centimeters in length starting from um about uh 12 to 15 centimeters from the mono uchi so if i'm reading that correctly here let me grab an example blade so again the mono uchi is this section of the blade this top third of the katana and they're saying starting from the mono uchi from the foible so from here to there about one foot of the blade has a chip taken out of it and said um the other comment is um use it as is with the standard uh japanese koshirai so that's the only other comment i guess he rec makes he recommended he either is endorsing it or just commenting that he used it with the japanese style instead of the uh, military style uh, koshirai all right the next blade a little bit longer 72.7 um centimeter uh, nagasa 1.5 uh, centimeter, uh, sorry, and seven strikes, all of them recorded at the neck. It says that they were com completed with uh, completely severed with no resistance. Comment when striking an object with the sword, the edge may chip or dull slightly in the vicinity of the impact. Um, and comments about it also when used in the original Japanese koshirai, the cutting is better than expected. So I don't know if this is someone who had the opportunity to strike with both types of mounts, but this one seems to be surprised at the performance of using these Japanese style mounts and seemed to feel that the cutting went very well. Um, and again, this is someone who reports that when striking something, there may be some very minor damage to the edge. The next sword. Uh, 74.2, so one of the larger examples. Um, 1.5, sorry, so about the same amount of curvature. Four strikes. Two to the neck or shoulder area, and then two that are described as belly stabs. The uh, cutting experience was described as cutting beyond expectations. Very high quality uh, cutting experience. 
no damage or nothing abnormal to report as far as damage is concerned. And this is described as in standard uh, military sword mounting. So my understanding is these accounts should be taking place prior to the rollout of the Type 94 Shin Gunto, which occurred in uh, 1934. So these Gunto should either be the Q style, uh, the Q Gunto style, or the, again, more traditional style um, Nihonto. But um, we'll take a look at that a little bit later. The next example, another one that has a length of 74.2 and a curvature of 1.5 centimeters. One strike recorded. This cut is described as to the back of the head at an angle. And it describes one third of a horizontal cut as the description of the cut. So presumably it did not make it all the way through. It only made it about a third of the way through the target. Um, as far as damage is concerned, it says from the Kisaki of the blade, one third and two thirds of the blade has horizontal creases, making it unusable. So presumably from here, so the Kisaki here at the, the tip, it says about this much of the blade has damage. So in this case, the blade struck a very hard target, again, the, the back of the skull, and it did not sever it cleanly. So the, the situations where any type of sword, not just katana, but any type of sword is most prone to damage is when it has the opportunity to sink into a target that will hold it fast and then move. Uh, for example, striking um, wood that is unsupported. So for instance, if you had a log that was hanging freely on a, uh, a rope and you struck the log and then the log bites into the blade or the blade rather bites into the log and the log has the opportunity to swing or twist. That is one of the easiest recipes to cause a severe damage to your sword. It sounds like something similar happened uh, in, in this particular case. So um, the it also describes, if I can read my own notes here, the main blade has a bohi on the front and back, and the left is unpolished for strength. That's an interesting note. I'm not sure exactly what that means. There is an inscription on the back from the third year of Kanbun era. So this is an antique. This is a, an ancestral blade that they're cutting with. So it had bohi, just like this example does here. There's bohi on, on both sides of the blade that they're describing. And it says it was left unpolished. So I'm not sure if they're saying that they decided not to bring it up into full shine. It's true that if you start shining the blade, you are actually removing a very little amount of material. The togishi, who does a restoration of a sword, will measure the sword in weight before and after, and will give a report as to how many grams of difference is um, it makes in the sword, because there's a very, very small amount of material that is lost. So perhaps this is an example where they're saying that they're just reporting that it wasn't polished just in case that had some um, material uh, impact on the integrity of the blade. Um, it does report that it had fullers. So this um, ancestral blade that may or may not, the, the may on here, as my machine translation says, was uh, Masahiro uh, Kawachi. I don't know if that's correct, and forgive my pronunciation. Um, was a, a 17th century reasonably large blade. And unfortunately, it seems to have only uh, had one strike and it seems to have suffered damage as a result of it. Let's see if uh, there are any other records of uh, using older blades. Um, the next one is the same length, 74.2, curvature of 1.7. Now, there's this this is an interesting one. So for the number of strikes recorded, it says 42. And there's an author's note. The author doubts the likelihood of this very high report compared to the other accounts. So when they were doing interviews, they got to this one guy and he claims he made 42 attacks. Now, as we've seen in most other cases, everyone is giving an account of maybe I struck one person or maybe I had a single encounter. This was occurred... This, this are tabulated after action reports 
over, I think, a 30-something day period. So it's not like they had an attack and then immediately said, oh, you, you, you struck down someone in hand-to-hand -hand combat, tell us what happened. No, this is after a, approximately a month's worth of fighting in Shanghai. And sometime thereafter, they conducted interviews and they said, tell us, did you ever use your sword? If so, what happened? So this is going off of soldiers' memory, uh, mostly NCO and officers. And this one guy claims that he went to town 42 times and even this very pro-sword um, historian, um, naval historian, who was recording it within a year of the incident, seems to be highly suspect as to if this um, was likely to, uh, to be authentic. Um, he describes that the strikes were mainly at, conducted at the head as well as other parts of the body. Um, he only describes the cutting ability as exceptional. As far as damage, there is nothing un particularly unusual. Although I thought there would be marks from cutting bone, there, um, but there are only whitish areas on the monouchi of the blade. So according to this one officer, uh, despite how, however much action he saw, he feels that the blade only had some whitish marks. Um, now, this blade that I've been showing, I've been doing a lot of... Um, a lot of cutting recently on mostly green, but some also some brown bamboo. And I do have some very light kind of whitish discoloration on the hamon area where it's hardest. So where it has struck the bamboo, the bamboo has left some kind of whitish marks um, that are a result of basically scuffing up the surface where the surface is hardest and prone to, to being scratched. So um, it's interesting that, that he records that as a result of, he says, uh, striking bone. Um, the cutting ability is extremely good when compared with several other Japanese swords. Now, again, it's unclear whether he was doing all this action with a single sword or he had access to multiple swords. So um, the way that this report is written, it suggests it's just the single sword with a Nagasa of 74.2. Uh, centimeters. Moving on to the next one, 66.7 uh, centimeters in length, unknown Nagasa. One strike recorded at the neck. Um, as far as damage is concerned, about three centimeters. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, as far as the strike is concerned, about three centimeters of flesh remained, presumably at the neck. So it did not quite go all the way through. Uh, there is no notch or imperfection from the middle to the upper part of the blade. Then for about two soon, which is around six centimeters. Um, so the way that this is written, and this may be an imperfection of the translation, it's, it's, it suggests that most of the blade is fine, and then there's perhaps around six centimeters up here where there is an issue. Um, it says that this is a new sword from the uh, Genrok, period from uh, 1618 to 1704. So uh, so this is a Shinshinto uh, period sword. So this is another ancestral blade um, of a slightly smaller size. And it's even though they just did one strike, it looks like it survived uh, pretty well. Um, another shorter blade, 54.2 centimeters, which would probably classify it as a long wakasashi. 1.2 um, centimeters of sori. It describes several people, so several strikes, presumably. The strikes are described as diagonal strikes to the head and neck. And it says that the cutting ability is extremely good and it survives, presumably, in excellent condition. Um, however, as far as damage is concerned, the blade becomes dull from the tip to about 15 centimeters from the tip. So about the mm, top third, so that kind of monochi area, does develop dullness. Um, it also, as far as comments are concerned, says wrap the handle of the shirasaya with presumably ito to make it easier to use. It's interesting that it makes a comment about shirasaya, because uh, shirasaya would not usually um, be used in combat. I wonder if 
because of necessity. Perhaps at some point this was being transported. It happened to be in a shirasai, which is the, um, the white wooden mount that the blade rests in when it is um, basically being put away, put, put out for display. Um, perhaps out of necessity, he had to grab it um, just because of uh, an intense situation. And he recommends that um, if you're in theater and you're, you have your shirasaya there, put an ito wrap around it so that you can actually uh, make use of it. Uh, I can imagine if you did try and strike with a shirasaya with just a plain wooden handle, it would be very difficult to use. So he's recommending put an uh, ito wrap uh, around it. Uh, the next blade, uh, 68.5 centimeters in length, two centimeters of sori, two strikes recorded, one at the neck, and one, um, okay, so we'll do the neck one first. The neck one, it says the uh, head fell off, leaving just a very thin layer of skin remaining. And then the neck one, the next one is a draw cut, uh, nuki, uh, nuki uchi. So presumably some type of an EI attack, and it describes as being cut halfway through. I'm not sure what the target of that was. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't expand that. Nuki Uchi at the front of the neck. So a draw cut straight uh, towards the front of the guy. He, oh, I'm sorry. When executing uh, Nuki Uchi, strike the object in two places with the Fukura and one place at the Monouchi to prevent the blade from becoming dull. I guess that's either a recommendation or what he attempted. So the the Fukura is this part of the Kisaki here, the kind of curved part, and the Monouchi is again this upper uh, foible here. And so he's recommending strike right essentially at that juncture, presumably, to prevent from dulling the blade, which is kind of interesting. So it's somewhere in between a slash and a and a stab, presumably. Other notes, wrap the handle of the uh, regulation military sword twice with cotton in order to prevent the blade, in order to prevent blade dulling, in order to, to better cut in an emergency situation. Now he's talking about the handle. Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm. Again, I'm wondering if that's a translation error, but the way I have it as written, wrap, he's recommending wrapping the handle of the Q uh, Gunto with um, cotton. Presumably the, the grip is difficult to hold. And then he feels that that'll perhaps make it easier to cut well. Um, the next blade, it's 76.1 centimeters in length, uh, 1.5 centimeters of curvature. One strike done to the back of the head. It says uh, a third was cut through. Numerous notches were created in apparently uh, the uh, three centimeters just behind the kaseki. The, the, in the three centimeter area just behind the kasaki. It was used in Japanese style koshirai, so traditional mounts. Uh, another short blade, uh, 57.5 Nagasa. Seven strikes recorded, three to the neck. Um, one is an Osoto Kesegake, which is kind of a big side sweep, and then a big overhead cut, Karatake. It says that the cutting ability is sufficient, so good cuts all around. Um, the only damage recorded from the tip to about uh, tw 12 centimeters down the depth is at its maximum and at its minimum is about six millimeter in two places on the blade. So it sounds like there's a little bit of damage again in the uh, the cutting portion, so the upper foible of the blade. The next one, 69.7 centimeters, sorry of 1.8, two strikes recorded, one at the neck and one unclear location. The next strike he describes as being successful 9 out of 10 times, and the other one I guess is the same strike because it says that the severed head flew up about 3 shaku, or 3 feet. Two or three places in the central part did not develop notches in the blade. 
So the way it's described did not develop suggests that there are other areas that did develop, not just a little unclear from the way the language is. Um, it was used in Japanese-style kosherai. Okay, now we're moving on to a series of, of swords, and these are all listed as mur uh, Shin Murata Gunto. Um, my understanding is that these are the type of blades that are mass manufactured, so they're not made with traditional tamahagane, they're not ancestral blades. So the first one is 69.7 centimeters nagasa, and there are four strikes recorded. Uh, two at the neck, one um, kesa, a downward diagonal strike, and one straight overhead kara, um, karatake. Uh, it describes you can use anything so long as it has a great cutting edge. I don't know if that's a glow, glowing endorsement of the Murata blade. Uh, it says there are four places along the blade where there are chips or rolls. A chip about uh, eight millimeters deep, um, roughly uh, 12 centimeters from the tip, and chips or rolls about uh, eight centi um, 12 centimeters from the tip where the karatake was done. Um, there's no other description of the, the damage. Um, the next Mur Murata blade, uh, oh, yeah, the next Murata blade is 66.7 centimeters, 1.5 uh, centimeters of sori, and one strike's recorded, a downward diagonal strike to the neck. Um, this, it has a name, uh, Koyumitsu, this the Japanese sword has an unsatisfactory cutting edge. Ah, I see what it says. Author's note. It seems that this is the same person who used the uh, Koyumitsu, the Wakazashi. Perhaps they changed their sword because the Koyumitsu's blade was damaged. So this person perhaps got to compare both of them. The blade is curved from about nine centimeters below the tip and then straightens out towards the back as it inserted into the scabbard. Com and then it says, compared to Japanese swords, compared to Nihonto, uh, the sharpness and durability are significantly inferior. So this person had the chance to compare one of these new uh, mass-manufactured Murata swords to a traditional ancestral blade, and apparently is not uh, is saying that they do not fare, uh, uh, compare favorably. The next one, 68.2 centimeters long, one point two centimeters of sori, two strikes recorded at the neck. It says that the strikes were in good condition. A distance of around uh, 21 centimeters from the tip, the blade curves. The homan remains unchanged after about four people. Um, and then the tang curves. Authors note, although it's written that the sharpness of the blade does not change after four people, there is a contradiction. And the description says that only two people have been cut off. So even the author notes that there is a discrepancy <laughs> as to if there's two or four people. Because the of the Tang's curvature, the guard, the Suba, becomes loose and rattles, and the use of the sword becomes very inconvenient uh, at the end, uh, slipping off. So, um, the experts in Gunto will have to, to confirm this for me, but um, the the... The fittings are often made of a softer material than the steel around them. So if the, the, the Nakago, if the Tang, has been bent, it's likely caused a compression of the Habaki, which means it's no longer keeping the fittings um, in the position that they need to be. So now, if you try and use the sword, the, the Suka, the handle, and the Suba are going to have the ability to play and move around, which means it's going to be very difficult to use. The next Murata, six, and this is the last sword in our account, 63.6 centimeters long, 2.4 centimeters of curvature, so very curved, uh, two strikes recorded, one at the neck, which is a, it says is a satisfactory cut, and one at the skull, um, which it describes there's a considerable feeling of something. Multiple notches were created in two places, and when the skull was cut, the blade was bent towards the notches. Um, because of the bending of the blade, it could not be sheathed. So it's interesting, even though there are only four of these Murata Katana compared to the 20 plus other accounts that we have, um, it seems that all of these mass manufactured blades have kind of um, reasonably serious um, 
uh, damages that, that they suffered um, in this particular account. Let's take a, a quick break and, and uh, or now that we've come to the end of it, there's a section where the author has a, a kind of summary where he discusses findings from these accounts and basically room for improvement. Now, mind you, this is an author, the, ca the captain, who specifically is interested in promoting the use of the sword, and this will kind of come out in his comments. The context is, again, the naval land unit, or the, the marine special, the special unit that has uh, gone into uh, action here in Shanghai. So improvements uh, about the Gunto uh, from practitioners. Firstly, um, especially in urban combat and night battles and guerrilla activities such as undercover units um, and dealing with irregular forces, that they're all frequent here in today's battlefields. So again, back in 1932. In such a situation, one feels more confident with a sword at one side than one could imagine, and it's clear that the military sword of the commander and the, so the, the Q-Gunto and the new Gunto of the NCO officer and the soldier are things that make the uh, Chinese soldier and the other undercover agent grow cold or fearful. So he is saying that in the context that they're dealing with in close quarters, guerrilla fighting, uh, street to street, it is good to have this big sword at your side and it is making the enemies fearful. It's giving them pause knowing that the officers and the NCOs are walking around with a big sword at their hip. Again, this is the opinion of this one captain who is known to be a big proponent of swordsmanship and carrying swords around. Um, two, apart from a few individuals who find a wakasashi of about one shaku eight sun, uh, which is 54 centimeters, to be advantageous, given the convenience of using a handgun in one hand, most people find a suitable length for themselves to be between two shaku to two shaku three sun. So that's 60 centimeters to 70, 70 centimeters or so. Um, those with a proficiency level of three to four dan in kendo and who have undergone rigorous training believe that a longer sword of around uh, 76 centimeters to be better if the, the balance is appropriate. In addition, the so-called uh, Shin uh, Murata sword has a good initial sharpness, but the edge dulls quickly and is prone to various inconveniences due to its tendency to bend. Moreover, there is a feeling that the traditional Japanese swords, so tra traditional um, uh, ancestral swords, have uh, a higher level of dignity, durability, and reliability, and that it is of, in a different spirit. And there's an author note from uh, omura.net. The sudden decline in sharpness is strange. It may not be that due to the material of the blade, but rather a problem with the hardening. Uh, da, 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 da. Although Colonel uh, Koi, uh, Koizumi uh, criticized Murata swords, he held them in high regard, even so. So a couple interesting things there. So they mentioned that sometimes they used the combination of short wakizashi and pistol just as you would have seen in the 19th century, uh, the configuration of officers using uh, officer sword and pistol. Um, that's something that's, I guess, would have happened historically uh, in World War I or, or previous. Um, with Japanese-style swordsmanship, swordsmanship, you usually require two hands on the sword, but this is an opportunity to use both gun and sword at the same time. The other interesting thing is they're talking about katana. You know, oftentimes there's a lot of discussion nowadays as to how long a katana is. In this period in World War II, talking about the gunto, we're talking about pretty short blades, 60 to roughly 70 centimeters. That's kind of cutlassy sized. Um, but that's talking about for most users who may only have whatever training in swordsmanship is being issued by their, in, uh, their induction into the military. They're saying for those who come in with their own uh, fencing background, who come in as third or fourth degree black belts in kendo, who have a, a background as fencers, might prefer a longer blade up to 70, I said 76, probably like 74 centimeters, uh, two shaku, four sun. So that's interesting. So they're saying if you're a proficient swordsman, and again, remember the, the Japanese, um, uh, soldier of this 
a era would have been shorter than comparable westerners of the time um is still using a reasonably long uh blade at uh, 74 uh, centimeters in length um or could could potentially use a, a longer blade uh, next, regarding the scabbard, the current scabbard covered with shark skin tends to peel off when exposed to the rain for four to five hours. The wooden part is thin and easily broken or cracked. Also, rainwater and other things uh, easily penetrate between the metal fittings at the end of the scabbard, which is very unsatisfactory. The military-style exterior is more advantageous, so this is contrasting the two types of uh, kosherai that they have. You have the standard uh, metal uh, scabbard that can come on the naval Kyugunto, and then you have the more traditional ones that are covered in ray skin. In any case, in, act in actual combat, it's necessary to have a scabbard covered with skin, samagawa, and this is something that cannot be dispensed with. So it's saying that you absolutely need to have skin covered with it in combat. I'm not sure exactly why it's necessary, but they say that it's very necessary at some point to have... Um, uh, to have skin covering it, even though the rain is actually causing problems. So again, very different uh, being out in, in theater, in the environment, than just having your sword sitting in your nice controlled uh, study. Number four, regarding the handle, the length of the handle is not fixed. Um, as such, you have grips that are up to 24 centimeters, but it depends on the length of the sword and the size of the hand. So about two and a half grips that's probably two and a half hands they're saying, is appropriate. The current problem with the handle is, and again, they're talking about the Q Gunto that has the, the handle with the knuckle bow attached. One, it becomes very cold and uncomfortable to hold during severe winter season. Uh, in severe winter weather, the handle becomes very cold and it's not suitable for use. Uh, to prevent slipping, it's necessary to wrap the handle in double layers of cotton cloth. The hilt should be of the spring-loaded type. So again, if it's a naval sword, it, I believe it has a locking mechanism that has a button on it. Perhaps not all of them are like that, and they feel that it should be of the spring-loaded type. Um, there is a carving on part of the suba that faces the handle, and it can injure the second knuckle of the index finger. So on the knuckle bow, there is a little embellishment, and apparently everyone's clonking their finger on that. Um, the metal fittings that extend from the guard of the hilt to the top of the fist are unnecessary and get in the way. Get rid of those. They don't like all of these fancy things that I believe are um, from the French designs originally. Um, the handle length is insufficient for cutting and thrusting above protective clothing. I believe that refers to if you're wearing protective clothing, then the, the current handle, it says the current handle is insufficient for cutting and thrusting above protective clothing. So they're saying that if you're wearing like big gloves, it's you can't fit your hand in there. It's possible that they're saying that it's not allowing a grip to go through protective clothing, but I don't believe that that's the case. It is extremely necessary to master Japanese sword technique. So again, an indictment that the Kyugunto um, does allow for the proper um, hand position for Japanese style fencing. Next, on the wearing of military swords, the sword should be worn over the upper garment and the sword belt should be supported by the shoulder and hanging leather. So they're asking for a baldric style of um, configuration instead of wearing it around the belt. Um, the current method of wearing the sword and the appearance of the military sword, that is long sword uh, fittings, are disadvantageous for nighttime covert operations due to the high level of noise produced. So going back to... Um, the 19th century and uh, things that were recorded with, for instance, cavalry sabers, a trooper's sword in its metal fitting will make a lot of noise. And if you have a whole bunch of folks with their sabers, you've heard the expression to rattle one saber. If someone's doing saber rattling, they're causing a lot of noise in anticipation of, of uh, making a threat. Uh, the same seems to be true here. If they're wearing their, their metal, their metal um, naval scabbards, uh, they cause a, a bunch of ruckus, and apparently uh, you can't 
engage in your ninja ninja activities as a uh, as a sneaky um, marine unit, naval marine unit, if you're wearing metal um, Q-Gunto uh, fittings. Um, next, improvements should be made to prevent the sword from interfering with crawling and rapid movement. Also, measures such as installing a tail lock on the sword belt should be taken to make it convenient for use in motor vehicles. So I assume that they want to clip the end of it so that it doesn't swing around if you're on a uh, motorcycle or a vehicle. Um, and that's the, the last, the last recommendation they have. So a very interesting look. Um, this, this is one of the rare occurrences where we have firsthand accounts of folks using swords in battle. Um, we often hear about the durability and cutting power of katana. This is an interesting point in time because you have the transition out of the the uh, late 19th century style of katana. You have ancestral blades and you have the modern machine-made katana, but you actually have actual users actually using them in a wartime situation and reporting what went on. Um, so there's often discussion as what is going to happen to a sword if it's used in a battlefield circumstance. From these accounts, we can find out that if a sword meets up against something heavy, a heavy resistant target like a, a gun or a, um, a bayonet or another sword. Again, uh, the resisting Chinese had their own swords and their, even their own spears and, and pole arms. It is very likely that that sword would receive some amount of damage, whether it was still usable afterwards or whether it would need to be retired um, or go in for repairs is, is questionable. Um, it seems that if they hit softer targets, a, a limb, a, a torso, maybe the neck, um, they might take more superficial damage. It was probably something like a 50-50 uh, sort of circumstances. Uh, it strikes against the heavier uh, targets, either the, the, um, the leg bone or the, the skull, seem to pretty to be a much higher rate of causing uh, more damage to to the edge of the sword. Um, again, we discussed briefly how if you fail to make a clean cut all the way through, that's kind of your your recipe for for causing more serious uh, edge damage. Um, but again, the sword may be able to be repaired if it's a small chip or if it's just a roll. So whether the sword is completely out of commission or whether it's just suffered some amount of damage, there's a bit of a spectrum there. But the point is, if you're going to use the sword, it's expect it to not come out of that encounter completely unscathed. There are no laser beams when it's we're talking about actual swords and actual use in combat. Anyway, that's all that we have for now. I hope you guys found this educational and enjoyable, and we'll be back next time for more sword-related discussion. Take care.